What is interest? How does compound interest differ to simple interest? How to make your money make money for you? What is the rule of 72 and the time value of money? And most importantly, how can we use compounding to retire early using the 4% rule? In this video, we will go over all of those topics and add more important details to the story. But before we do, feel free to subscribe and ring the notification bell for more personal finance, investing, business and motivation related content and weekly book summaries. Ok, let's start off with simple interest. Interest is often defined as money paid regularly at a set rate for the use of money lent or for delaying the repayment of a debt. Simply put, borrowing money will cost you additional money, as most often you'll have to repay more than you borrowed. And the additional amount is called interest. Now simple interest is calculated using only the principal of the loan, meaning that simple interest paid or received over a period of time is a fixed percentage of the borrowed or lent principal amount. For example, if you borrow $10,000 at an annual interest rate of 10% over 4 years, Using simple interest, the loan will cost you $1,000 every year. So 1000 times 4 years is 4000 and when we add that to the principal, that means you'll end up owing a total of $14,000. Pretty simple and easy and you can calculate it using this formula. Compound interest is a bit more complicated than simple interest. It's calculated on the principal balance plus any outstanding interest that has already occurred. In other words, it's interest on interest. For example, the same $10,000 from before at the same 10% over 4 years using compound interest will cost you $1,000 the first year, but the next year it will cost you $1,100, which is 10% of $11,000 or $10,000 principal plus the $1,000 in interest that we already paid. And each year it will keep growing, so you'll end up owing a total of $14,641 versus $14,000 using simple interest. Now the additional $641 might not seem like much, but bear in mind that this is a fairly short term loan. We are looking at only 4 years here and most quote unquote big loans in our life are being repaid over long periods of time. And that stretches up to 30 years for mortgages, so take a look at how big a difference this makes over a 30 year period. As you can see here, the total amount owed would more than quadruple over 30 years. In our example, simple interest will sum up to a total of $40,000, while compound interest would compound up to a whopping $174,494.02. Now that's a major difference. And you can calculate compound interest by using this formula. Ok, one more quick thing to note before we move away from plain definitions is the effect of compounding periods, as it can make a significant difference. The higher the number of compounding periods, the greater the amount of compound interest. This effect has diminishing returns though, meaning that the difference it makes falls off very quickly as the number of periods rises and you'll seldom see compounding calculated more often than monthly. Annually, semi-annually, quarterly and monthly are common, widely used options. The fact whether you make additions, if there are any, before or after compounding is another factor that makes a difference in long term calculations. For the earlier compound versus simple interest example, my spreadsheet ran annual compounding, but here is how much the total would increase if you compounded that example monthly instead of annually. So $198,373.99 is the monthly result, while $174,494.02 is the annual result. Again, a significant difference. Now, here's the tricky part. In both cases, the interest rate was actually the same, but the numbers, as you can see, are actually very different. By compounding the interest monthly or any other time horizon more frequent than a year, you'll get a higher effective interest rate. Luckily, in most countries, any loan provider must provide you this number and the total amount that you will owe, so make sure to always read the fine print when taking out a loan. Now, the phenomenon of compounding is famously called the eighth wonder of the world by Albert Einstein. Quote, Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. Now, this is so neatly put and is the reason why I'm making this video. So far, we've only looked at the quote-unquote negative side of the interest. We only looked at the interest that we have to pay. But the interest we have to pay is also the interest that someone else earns. While it's very important to make sure we don't pay too much interest, it's even more important to understand what compounding can do for us. 
By loaning out our money to others or investing our money, we can earn interest. And by reinvesting the interest it earns, we can earn compound interest. You've probably already been asked the cliché question, would you rather take a penny that doubles every day for 30 days or 1 million dollars instantly? If you have not been, which one would you take? Let's take a look at what happens to the penny. As you can see, it's worth over 5 million dollars after the 30 days. That's the power of compounding right there. So, how can we all have the power of compounding work for us instead of against us? No, you don't have to summon a magic penny, you don't have to own a bank, you don't have to be a loan shark or a trust fund baby either. Bonds are for example just one asset class that pays interest, but try looking at any investment return as it was interest, it's not any different really, we just tend to call it differently. Any money your investments and assets generate, if reinvested, will result in compounding. The stock market, for example, has generated an annualized return of about 10% if we are looking at the S&P 500 since its inception as the benchmark. Since the index was expanded to contain 500 stocks, it has generated an annualized return of about 8%. This means that the stock market is a great example of a passive compounding machine that gives you good returns over the long term. For example, a thousand dollars invested at eight percent return, compounded monthly over thirty years, turns into ten thousand nine hundred thirty-five dollars and seventy-three cents. Now, if you started with the one thousand bucks and kept adding a hundred every month, that would turn into one hundred and sixty thousand nine hundred and sixty-five dollars and twenty-five cents after thirty years. While starting with zero and adding $700 every month for 30 years would create a nest egg worth $1,050,206.62. As you can see, compounding can be used to grow your existing money and even let you retire much sooner than expected, but more about this in a few minutes. Now there's a rule that you can use to quickly approximate how fast your money will double, provided that you know the interest rate, it's known as the rule of 72. By dividing the number 72 by your interest rate, you will get an approximate number of years that it takes for your money to double. For example, 72 divided by 5 is 14.4, which means that the money will double in approximately 14.4 years if it's invested at 5% interest. But how accurate is this approximation? Well, I let my compounding spreadsheet compound $1000 to see how big a difference it will actually be. After 13 years and 11 months, the $1000 turned into $2002.48, compounded monthly at 5% interest. Rule of 72 approximation is 14.4 years. And after 8 years and 9 months, the $1000 turned into $2009.08, compounded monthly at 8%, while the approximation is 9 years. Let me remind you again that compounding monthly results in a bit higher effective rate, making the period a bit shorter, so this actually shows that the rule of 72 is a pretty good and reliable quick approximation. Of course, you can also calculate the exact doubling time of an investment using this formula, but I bet you won't be able to do that on top of your head. Another important thing to note here is that investing in the market often comes with some fees, and those fees effectively lower your returns. This is why they should be taking into account when calculating expected returns. Locally they can be negligible if you're invested in a low cost index fund for example. Now that we know that we can use compounding to make our money make more money, and we can even approximate how quickly it will grow, we really should be aware of what's referred to as the time value of money. Since the market is capable of growing your money at a bit over 8% annually over the long term, any money you choose to spend, instead of investing it in the market or maybe some other even more profitable asset, also makes you pay the opportunity cost of never getting the money that your money would have generated over the given period of time. Let's go back to our example from earlier. We concluded that it took $1000, 8 years and 9 months to turn into $2009.08. If we have a thousand dollars in our hands that we know we won't need during the following eight years and nine months and consider spending them instead of investing them, we also must take into account the money it will make for us over that period. This means that if we are for example looking to buy a new smartphone that costs a thousand dollars, by buying it we are also going to deny the additional money that our money can earn for us from ever being earned, which means that a phone actually costs us two thousand and nine dollars and eight cents during this period, and if the period is extended, the price increases. 
So, the next time you find yourself considering a purchase and thinking whether it's actually worth the money, make sure to also count the time value of money in, and then consider whether it's worth the money plus the money that that money would have made over a period. Now, when discussing the time value of money, many people point out the fact that due to inflation, that amount of money will not be worth as much as it is today, and this is completely true. However, long-term average inflation rate is about 2-3.5%, to while the market returns a bit over 8%. So still, with inflation taking into account, you will have to pay additional opportunity cost. There are many compounding calculators online that let you quickly calculate the value of a lump sum over a period of time, and even stock market return calculators that use actual historic data and can account for inflation, showing in turn the growth in purchasing power that your money will gain over the years. And finally, the best thing about the miracle of compounding is that it can enable us to retire early with total financial independence. How is this possible? Well, we know that the market returns over 8% in the long term and that the inflation is 2 to 3.5% over the long term, meaning that our money gains value and also outpaces inflation significantly. This fact allows us to achieve financial independence by living off of the interest our nest egg generates instead of spending the nest egg itself over time and hoping it doesn't run out. The problem is the fact that the 8% we keep mentioning are average returns. The stock market can oftentimes be a roller coaster, and while it yields great returns over the long run, there are periods of multiple years where the returns are tiny or even negative. This means that if we build a large nest egg and then just wait for the market to generate some positive returns and live only off of those, there would be years where we would have huge amounts of money to spend, but we would also starve over some other periods of time. Luckily for us, a research has been conducted that aims to find out how big a portion of your portfolio invested in either stocks or mix of stocks and bonds you could spend without running out of money during a 30-year period. This research has since become widely known as the Trinity Study or the 4% Rule. Ok, the name obviously gives away the result, and I'll make a full video dedicated to it, so I won't go into much detail here, but 4% is considered a safe withdrawal rate if you're planning to be retired for a period of 30 years, as the chances of you running out of money are extremely low with 4% withdrawal rate adjusted for inflation with a 75-25% stock bond portfolio. However, many people nowadays want to retire really young and use compounding to achieve that. The 4% withdrawal rate is safe for a period of 30 years, but if you want to retire at, let's say, 25 years of age, 30 years of safety is kinda too short for you. Luckily, the study also ran the numbers for 3% withdrawal rate, and in every case, the portfolio value was significantly higher at the end of 30 year period adjusted for inflation. This in turn means that at 3% withdrawal rate, your money will actually grow, and you can live off of the 3% withdrawals forever. Nothing in this world is guaranteed, but this 3% withdrawal rate is as close to guaranteed as it can get. If you can acquire a large enough nest egg, you can live off of the 3% withdrawals for any period of time, meaning you can retire at any age without the fear of sequence of returns risk that has a tiny chance of leaving you dry with 4% withdrawals over 30 years. A quick way to figure out how much money you would need for the 4% and the 3% withdrawal rates is to calculate your exact yearly expenses down to the last penny and multiply them by 25 or 33 respectively. Here's a quick example. Upon writing down all your purchases for multiple months, you'll find out that all your necessary expenditures combined, including housing costs and car payments, sum up to $2,000 per month on average. Now you take that 2000 and multiply it by 12 to get a yearly figure, which is 24000 and now you multiply that by 25 or 33 to get your FI number. So your 25x or 4% withdrawal number is 600000 while your 33x or 3% withdrawal number is 792000 this means that in this scenario you can live off of a 600k portfolio at 4% withdrawal rate for 30 years with a negligible chance of your money running out during the 30 year period. Or you can live off of a 800k ish portfolio at 3% withdrawal rate forever with basically no chance of ever running out of money. In both cases you can also adjust the spending upwards as inflation rises.
Bear in mind that this means that you could retire, not that you must retire. The choice becomes yours as you become financially independent. You might want to quit a job that's tedious but you work there for the good money and go do something that makes you happy, excited or benefits a community that you care about. You can even decide to go volunteer for any cause. The freedom of choice becomes yours. Compound interest may seem like a boring topic, but it's really important for anyone to know how they can use it and how to avoid it being used against them, so I hope these insights in how it works and how we can use it were useful to you. Thank you for watching, and as a final note let me just clarify that none of this is investment advice. You should always do your own due diligence before investing, as it's your money and you and only you are responsible for the consequences of your own actions. With that out of the way, thank you all for sharing the videos with friends and of course destroying the like button. There is much more investing, personal finance, business and motivation related content on the way, as well as weekly book summaries, so feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I'll see you next week, so enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye!